Then if you want to drop back to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. I'm going to stay a lot in Hebrews today. This is also the voice. And, you know, we, we talk a lot, Danny and I and the other musicians and people on the worship team. And we really miss having more singers. Believe me when I tell you, those of you on the worship team, we want to build a bigger altar. Some way that we can stay six feet apart up here. How am I doing? Six feet apart. <laughs> so that... We can just hear each other singing, right? But it was great to hear you all today. I could hear you because of these side panels up. I don't know if you could hear each other, but man, I've been missing that. Yeah. So he compares this to a race here in Hebrews chapter 12. Remember, 11 is the hall of faith. Talks about all these amazing heroes. And then he says, since we're surrounded by such a great, what? Wow. Cloud of witnesses. All these amazing Christians yeah. that have gone before us yeah. in the Bible, but also just in church history. How many of you have somebody you can't wait to meet when you get to heaven? And I don't even mean like a Bible character. Like, obviously, I'm going to want to meet my mother. My mother was the one that led me to the Lord, right? So she not only gave me earthly life, she gave me spiritual being born again in the spirit. So I, I really owe her a big debt. But I want to see my dad and a lot of my loved ones. But there's a lady named Betsy Ten Boom <laughs> from The Hiding Place. That's Corey Ten Boom's sister. She's amazing was amazing, and it has inspired me in ways that I can't even totally number because she's part of that great cloud of witnesses in my brain. And we all probably have a different crowd and a different cloud of witnesses, but people have inspired us to push through when we didn't think we could make it, right? So now he's saying the rest of that verse one, after since we're surrounded, let us drop every extra weight and every sin that clings to us. Is that easy? No, but do I have to be intentional? Yeah. Yes, drop it. It's clinging to you, drop it. In other places it says, put off the old man, as if you're taking off a garment, and put on the new man. So if it's clinging to you, drop it. Because what does it do? In the voice it says, it slackens our pace. What's the pace about? We're in a, we're in a race, right? So if you're in a race, you don't want to slacken your pace. You want to run to win. That's how Paul described it, right? And they had the Olympics in those days and, and events like that. They used to compete in the Colosseum. And he said, if you're going to run, run to win. Amen. And then at the end of his life, he said, I have fought the good fight. I have run the race. People will use that often at, at memorial services and funerals. How about you? How are you running the race? Say good in Jesus' name. I'm running to win. If you're not so sure, say it by faith. I'm running a good race. That's it, by faith. That's right. It's by faith. In chapter 11, one after another after another. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Moses. By faith, David, right? By faith, we're running this race, and we don't want anything to slow us down. So he said, if that sin is clinging to you, let it go. Drop it off. Whew. And run with endurance the long race that is set before us. <laughs> so I'm just going to tell you, we don't pray in this church to say, Jesus, come back and take us home. That's a fatalistic attitude. Okay? So if you're feeling that way, that's okay. We just don't want you to stay there. Just ask Trisha to lay hands on you, and it'll change real quick. Just to release some of that fire. Our God is a consuming fire. My wife is a consuming fire. She's, she's, she's on fire for God, and that's awesome. We should all be, right? But, I mean, there's been times that she's felt that she needed a spark as well. That's one of the reasons it's so valuable to come together. And the Bible says, forsake not the assembling together. Not just the gathering together, but the assembling together so that we can let the sparks fly back and forth. If you're having a rough day, you can help me if uh, I can help you and, and vice versa, right? So that's all he's saying. We're going to run this race and it's not a short little sprint. It's a long race. And, and if you're discouraged, you're like, Lord, just get me out of here. I'm done with this. I, I wish you would just come back already. Like, no, that's, that's part of that passivity that tries to grip us when we're discouraged. We're here for a reason. I've said this, what I'm about to say about eight times in the last week. So if I was talking to one of you, bear with me. 1 John 3.8 says, For this purpose, 
the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the, en- of the enemy. Then he said in John chapter 20, as the Father has sent me, so I send. Now, is that you or is that you? That's you. That's all of us here, right? So if he was manifest to destroy the works of the enemy and he's sending us, As the Father sent me, so I'm sending you. What are we here for? To destroy the works of the enemy. How do we do that? By praying for people, by laying hands on them, by getting them saved, by once they're saved, helping them get delivered from stuff that they might have carried in, by getting the word of God out there, by bringing clothes to Patterson, all the different ways that we can act in a redemptive way as ambassadors for the Lord. So, of course, the enemy wants to discourage you. Of course he wants to unplug you, because even if he just takes 10% of your edge off, you're not working at full capacity. Just lift your hand and say, I'm going to work at full capacity. I'm going to operate in the freedom of the Lord. By faith. Yes, you are. And I I, I back that up. So Hebrews 12, 2 says, stay focused on Jesus. When you're having a little rough time, stay focused on Jesus. Anybody here a long-distance runner? Got one over here. Well, I thought I'd get one hand up. All right, thank you, Rich. So you, if you're a long-distance runner, you know at some point you're going to hit the wall. And that means you're going to want to quit. Your body is screaming at you. All the circuit breakers are going off saying, we're going to die, we're going to die, we're going to die. And you just keep pushing through. Maybe you could compare it to fasting, right? Oh, I better not drive while I'm fasting. I might pass out and crash in the car. Like, please take the bubble wrap off, please. You're going to be okay. (laughs) So, yeah, preach is right. When you hit the wall, you get something called a second wind. Ha, that's the wind of the Holy Ghost. That's what happens. When you're praying and you're fasting and you're pressing in and you feel like it's time to quit, sometimes that's just what it says in the Word of God, right? Weeping may endure for a night, but but joy comes in the morning. You sow in tears, but you reap in joy, bringing in sheaves, harvest, if you push through and you don't quit. That's what this is about. He's telling us, stay focused on Jesus. I know you get tempted by your flesh to bail on the process or to stop talking to people because they're not voting the right way. You know, Thanksgiving is coming up and there's going to be all kinds of stuff. And one of the people I was talking to this week said, I was feeling a little discouraged that I wasn't changing fast enough. (laughs) We're trying to help her, you know, in ministry. And she said, I don't really, I was feeling like I hadn't changed. Then I realized that I'm hosting Thanksgiving dinner this year. And every other year in the past, she was so mad at the rest of her family, she didn't want to host. And just that alone proved in her mind, I'm not the same person I was. God's working on my heart because I don't have that horrible feeling when I think about my family. Well, guess that is not the devil. That is the Lord. That's what happens. You get shifted on the inside. It says he endured the cross and ignored the shame of death because he focused on the joy that was set before him. That's our formula for today. I'm staying focused on the Lord. I'm not going to be shaken. Do I, do I get tempted to engage in arguments and disagree with people and think really bad thoughts about other people? Am I the only one being honest right now? I said you get tempted. It doesn't mean you have to do it. Because when that happens, start singing songs in the night. I'm praising the storm. And though I am in the storm, not in me. The whole service was worth it just for that one right there. I'm telling you, that song will stay on your jukebox. 